Testing. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I'm not good at addressing a group of people. I tend to like to only speak to one person. So this is a letter addressed to an individual. Hello. Hello. Okay. Daniel says you're very busy, but I got a time for a cigarette and a short chat. I didn't get a chance to tell you more about my art between 2016 and 2019 because you know like, life gets in the way but then again I don't need to <clears throat> talk talk about it because it was just part of life like sweat and you already know my life still how did it all start in the first place because to be honest I was just tired of making artworks per se. So this was my way of cleaning up by focusing on the material that I use to wipe things up with that's formulated to disintegrate and meant for flushing. And during the same period, mom also started talking about clearing up her possessions to make it easier for us when she passes in the future. And these two energies ran in parallel back in 2016, which most likely triggered my own anxiety about death. So I thought about tombs and memorials, and I wove this soft one in space, which is meant to face northeast towards Pulau Takong, where mom wants her ashes to be scattered where her family stayed during the Japanese occupation and before the government land requisition. Meanwhile, there was also these smaller monuments. I just like the stupidity of stacking toilet paper as neatly as possible. It's like pointless boleao paperwork, the breaking apart and reconstitution in some ways very much like the human body. And I like defeating the vertical, the phallic. Here, painting also took on a new meaning for me through the actions of wiping and absorption, the interplay between a clean white surface with a stain of pigment ink and more sui. It's a funny take on our rice paper scrolls. And you know what? <clears throat> it's not just my own actions that make me laugh. It's those of others as well that I truly appreciate. For example, I find it funny when a gallery assistant contacts me sounding a little bit horrified that a visitor just kicked over or stepped on my work. In truth, I kind of love it actually because it makes me laugh. And then I just gently tell them that, you know, it's okay, no problem can just leave the installations as they are. You want to touch? Also okay. Surprisingly, toilet paper is not as fragile as it looks. It's sturdy, with heft, and on occasion I use to like throwing my work at people, like some weird art snowball. The installation of my works is even funnier. No one knows how to approach it. I just love the sense of danger and the exaggerated care in the handling of the works. But from the later half of 2017 and the beginning of 2018 onwards, I had started to move away from toilet paper. In spite of how you kept reminding me that Jason says he likes it, he says, oh, Lee Wen likes it, maybe life felt less soft then. Maybe life was a little bit more slippery, the meaning harder to grasp. Perhaps because of the geographical distance between us? Maybe, possibly, because of the health updates as well. Plus, you know what was happening in Singapore back then, right? All that news and the discussions from both the pink dot and the wear white contingents were just becoming louder, more shrill, and that rattled me also. 
You know me, la, I used to avoid conflict. Back then, it felt like some contemporary form of leprosy. Some modern-day fear accompanying this creeping pandemic of identitarian politics in the last five recent years. So, to find clarity again as an artist, I simply focus back on one small thing. My fingertips. And whatever creative outflow after that became more and more about touch, contact, contamination, the unsanitary, the sterile, the separation, sometimes by sheer ideology and political beliefs, the connection through shared human values, grounded in our own dirty and clean flesh. This neglected, unified, embodied experience can be beautiful to observe. For my own works, the sweet spot for me is this, that half the viewers see it and the other half just completely miss it or ignore it. Now, I always tell curators that the ideal encounter for my works should feel like how we relate to longkangs and the drain water. You know, it's always there, beside or below us, and we can choose to notice it or not. We can take time to be with it or not. Fast forward to the tail end of 2019, and eventually I was able to come back to toilet paper and to you again. The sharp edges of the material had been softened somewhat by then. It's easy to look at each individual sheet and smile. You used to be a scruncher, and I was a folder. Before those actions and then the bum wiping, there is merely the tearing of the paper and the empty sheet. A sort of condition preceded before actual contractual obligations kick in. You can call it Schrodinger's toilet paper, where before it is folded or crumpled and then flushed, it holds within itself all the possibilities of decoherence like a blank canvas. So finally, I did end up giving Jason the toilet paper work that he asked for, for his show Repel Revel, which was his latest edition in Grey Project's annual queer programming. Mind you, when I do these works, I don't see them as queer sculpture or queer painting. By personal default, I don't even see them as art per se. But hey, we are all here to serve larger agendas and relations and ideologies. So whatever people want to call the toilet paper or the soap or the Vaseline, they are more than welcome to. Okay. I got the last two puffs of the cigarette, and before you go, may I take time to also wish you kindness and acceptance in this moment. And may you feel a sense of ease. We are all just here, sharing space for this short while. And as Amanda once remarked, we are all walking home together. So, you go do your thing and I'm going to spend a minute to get the fellow chat room people to think more about their middle finger. And you take care, yeah? We'll speak soon. See you. Bye.